Jan? Hi, everybody. I don't see. Hi, John. All right. Okay. All right. Yep. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. All right, it's seven o'clock. Let's just do a check to see who's here. I see Amy's here and John is here. Is Catherine or Stephen, are you here? Catherine's here. Excellent. Thank you, Catherine. Stephen, are you there? I see our billing is our, our attorney, Joe Moriello, is here. Yeah. Russell, Russell Sindler is here. I don't see Stacy yet, though. She's here, Lynn. She is here. Okay. I'm here. Oh. Steve is here, too, I think. Okay. I, he just called me on the phone. He said it was here. I can't see his picture, but if he's here, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Saw his name on the screen. Okay. All right. It's uh, 701. I would like to welcome all to the town of. New Paul Zoning Board of Appeals, August 15th meeting. And we had planned to have it in the courthouse, but uh, at the last moment, the government, the governor changed our plan. So here we are online once again. Um, first item. We've done the attendance. Amy is here. Catherine is here. John is here. Steve is here. Joe Moriello is here. And Stacy is here. Okay, at this time, uh, entertain a motion to open the meeting, if you would, please. I move. Thank you, John. All those in favor, by aye. 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 <clears throat> okay, meeting is now open. Um, approval of the July 18th, min uh, 18th minutes. Any recommendation or comments? I saw one thing that I'd like to get clear. Uh, Back in this section where it's talking about the September meeting, at one or two places it says September 19, and in another place it says September 12. Which is it? The 19th. The 19th. Well, I don't know which date in September we had the meeting, but I will. Uh, it's the 19th. I have the 19th. You have the 19th? Yes. Okay. So right now I just want to get the minutes corrected. Well, we will amend those minutes to reflect the proper date. Um, are there any other comments or changes that anyone offer, would offer for the minutes? Yes. Okay, at this point in time, I entertain a motion to accept the Ju July 18th minutes <laughs> as amended. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. Quorum check for September 19th. I will be there. I'll be there. Maybe you'll be there. John, John, yes. John will be there. John will be there. I'll be there, Catherine. Catherine will be there. Stephen, will you be there? Okay, we don't have an answer. But in either he's case, nodding, he's nodding his head. He's nodding his head. Okay. Um, okay, at this point in time, I would like to open the uh, floor for public comments. I would ask that if you're going to speak about either of the two items that are on the agenda, one being the building inspector appeal with regard to Five College Avenue or the uh, uh, area variance for 128 Mountain Rest Road that you hold your comments until we open the public hearing so that they in fact can become uh, part of the record and not, not public comment. 
Is there anyone that would like to speak with regard to public comments? I guess not. Okay. Um, first item, item on this evening's agenda, building inspectors appeal hearing, Five College Avenue, applicant Amy Frisch and Daniel Brown. I will entertain a motion to open that public hearing, but before we do that, I will tell everyone that we have received the affidavit indicating that the mailings were sent and we have seen photographs of the uh, lawn announcement. Okay, so at this point in time, entertain a motion to open public hearing for Five College Avenue. Need a second, please? Second. Okay, seconded. Okay, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Then I have a question. Uh, yes, Amy. Did you see the um, uh, the letter from this morning um, about uh, sent by, I believe, Amy Frisch's attorney? Is that right? Well, I will tell you that I was up at 5.30 prepping my properties for my upcoming tenants, and I came in about a half an hour, 45 minutes ago. I saw that it was there. I did not have a chance to read it or digest it. I do know that Stacy has asked for um, more time to review the um, letter that came from Mr. Schindler. Um, so it does not appear as though we will make a decision on this uh, application or this appeal this evening, but I would gladly listen to what the public has to say. So if you would like to speak, please state your name and where you live. And take yourself off mute. <laughs> I'm on mute? Not you. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Um, I, am I understanding that you're asking for the public to speak on the issue of five college Ave at this time? Yes, that is correct. Please state your name and where you live. Michelle Wynn. Um, I currently am in Virginia because my husband is stationed at Quantico. Um, he's in the Navy. Uh, we previously lived in New Paltz and my daughter, uh, the address there was 32 Bontecou View Drive in New Paltz, and then um, we lived at um, Bella Terra Apartments for a year before coming here. So um, my daughter, while we were still living in New Paltz, um, was a part of It's a Girl Thing, and she was in the group, in a group uh, uh, therapy session. Um, it was during the pandemic when our kids were being remotely schooled and um, it was, it was life-saving for my daughter. Um, and even from here in Virginia went and attended the It's a Girl Thing uh, retreat um, this past summer as she did the summer prior. Um, and I just, I really wanted to emphasize that the program that Amy Frisch runs is not a program like any other. Um, we did research a lot of um, other options for counseling for my daughter. Um, and the work that Amy Frisch does and all, all of the employees of It's a Girl Thing is phenomenal. Um, it is so supportive of families and of the girls in middle school and high school in the community of New Paltz. Um, where it is situated, it's fantastic for school students. Um, and I did attend the meeting just uh, that was prior to this. I'm sorry, I can't recall the date, but I did speak at that meeting as well um, to say that uh, it, I really, really believe that the town of New Paltz should not lose this incredible uh, business that is there in the residential neighborhood 
um, that doesn't infringe on residential life. Um, I've witnessed the way that it goes with drop off and pick up. Um, and I'm certain that if there is a uh, cantankerous neighbor who doesn't like having a lot of people come in and out, that there is a solution other than shutting down um, a long standing um, business that meets all the requirements, uh, both from prior and current. So that's what I wanted to put on record as a parent of a girl who has benefited so much from this work. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your commentary. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak with regard to? I would. Hello. Amy Jacobson says she would like to speak. <laughs> Hello. I, I don't know if my camera's on. They're not letting me put it on. Okay. Um, okay. Um, my name is Amy Jacobson. I am a, uh, a, I tried to start my video. It wouldn't let me. Okay. Yeah. We're good. I see you now. Okay. <laughs> well, um, my name is Amy Jacobson. I live in New Paul's. I'm also a psychotherapist in New Paul's, New York at 113 North Chestnut Street. I'm going to just read the letter that I wrote. Um, just to keep things concise. Um, so I'm writing this in support of Amy Frisch. Amy's participated at the practice location of College Avenue for close to 20 years. She works primarily with adolescents and provides such an important service in our community. She's helped countless youth and their families navigate through the tumultuous journey of adolescence, especially in these highly stressful days we're living in. I realize the issue at hand has to do with regulations and zoning laws, but I hope we do not lose sight as a community of the valuable service that she's providing to our youth. I'm a therapist in New Paul's who's been in practice for about 28 years. I'm aware of the need for therapists to support our adolescents and the shortage of qualified therapists providing these services in our community. Being therapists, we're in the problem solving profession. We specialize in conflict resolution. I'm a firm believer that as a community, we can put our heads together and find a solution that allows Amy to continue her practice in her current location and resolve the complaints and concerns being brought by, well, by a few neighbors. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I would like to speak. Robert Feldman. Yes, Robert, go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. My name is Robert Feldman and I live on Bruce Avenue behind Five College. I moved to this neighborhood six years ago after living in the village for 26 years. When my wife and I decided to downsize, we sought out specifically only R1 districts outside of the village because of the restrictive zoning. The Cherry Hill neighborhood was exactly what we were hoping for and we were very fortunate to find a small home to purchase and fix up to our liking for our future retirement. But shortly after moving in, we realized there was more going on in the house behind us than the typical residential use. We immediately started to notice that at certain times and days, there were many cars arriving at Five College at the same time and dropping off use for an extended period of time. This would also lead to outdoor activities and a return of the cars to pick, up, pick them up later in the evening. And much to my dismay, over time, it was obvious that many of these cars didn't leave the neighborhood and just sat and idled while waiting. Additionally, even when no one was there in the office, exterior spotlights are left on throughout the night, looming in large areas of the house. At the time, that many years ago, I did speak to the tenants who were very nice and sympathetic, but could not do anything about it as they stated that the owner of the house lived in Hawaii. This is all continued um, through the past six years that I've lived here, um, with some exceptional cases, such as last summer, when there was a multi-day sleepover camp held in the backyard with six plus tents and at least 16 youths attending. Worth noting, this was during the active time of the pandemic and seemed to go against common sense precautions. I've had to write Ms. Frisch multiple times to ask her to do something about loud outdoor gatherings and noise. In my last correspondence, Ms. Frisch instructed me to call the police if I wanted to. I mentioned this as to show the lack of neighborly concern or respect that comes from this property. 
I am requesting the ZBA not grant a variance for the following reasons. When this office was added in 1999, it was owner occupied, not renter. The Cherry Hill neighborhood is challenged with non-owner occupied properties. And we are currently as a group and we have a neighborhood association, we're asking the town board for relief to look at this problem. And we have a shortage of single family homes available for family purchase. This property is on a private well that is in the same latitude as mine. Um, this well does, I don't believe this house has the infrastructure um, to handle this kind of use. And nor was it ever intended to handle this kind of use. Um, this particular business does create hazardous conditions with idling cars and traffic. There are no sidewalks on these streets and limited lighting. When the stream of cars happens and if you're walking on Howard or Bruce, there is no place to go to get off the road. <clears throat> so my final comment, there are many commercial real estate opportunities around New Paltz for this type of use that have all of the amenities and appropriate zoning to accommodate them. There is no reason for this business to be operating out of a single family home in an R1 neighborhood. I don't see how this is the same as what I saw in 1999 when I read about it. And I can say just in a final comment that I, um, when I lived in the village, I served on the village board for many years and I was very involved in zoning in both the village and, and, and town issues. And I can tell you that there's never been an, um, a desire or an intent for a business to operate in an R1 zone. A home associated business perhaps, but not a straight business, which is what this is. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak. And if you had any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'd like to Thank speak. you very much for your commentary. Is, uh, I see there's a picture of someone else there. Yes, that's me. I can't start my video. I, I can't hear you. Hi there, I, I can't start my video. That's okay. Oh, there we go, thank you. Hi everyone, um, you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little bit nervous to be here tonight. My name is Rachel Spear and I live at Five College Avenue with my family. And I'm incredibly saddened to hear how the neighbors are feeling. And I just wish that maybe somebody had talked to me first about it or that we could have sat down together to try to figure things out. I didn't know a lot of this was going on and I feel deeply sorry that you had to feel that way and felt that I was unapproachable. I, I admit, you know, I, I do have friends over sometimes and in my twenties and I was so happy to move to New Paltz because it, you know, I, I grew up in the area and I'd always come to New Paltz to go to the shops in town and the restaurants and it was just a fun place to be. But now I feel, quite frankly, I feel pretty fearful to live here. I feel like I constantly have to watch who's driving by my house, looking in my windows, recording me, things like that. And it's all very unsettling. And I just wanted to put a face to my name and so that people know that you're not just talking about like, you know, some nameless person. I'm a real person and I have a family and this whole situation has not only been threatening to my family, my mental health, my physical health, my livelihood and my home. So I, I just ask that this, you know, if, like Shachelle said, if there could be a way where we could sit down and creatively come up with solutions, I'm happy to meet you at the table. But please, we just need to get to a table. Thank you. Thank you for your commentary. I, I would like to see something if possible. Okay. I'm trying to put my video on. Hi, um, I'm Janine Buxton. I'm at Two College Avenue. We're the closest neighbor to Amy or Rachel. <clears throat> and I have to say, I'm, I'm really surprised. First, Rachel, I never knew you lived there. And to hear that you're a family that lives there is, is surprising as well, because this is a very quiet road. I would never say that there's traffic on the road. Um, it took me years to realize that there was a business across the street. And we're in a neighborhood. This is not a rural, you know, farmland. So the fact that there are cars at intermittent times during the week, attending sessions, picking up kids is part of a neighborhood. I would say that there's zero disruption in our lives in my home across the street. Uh, 
I'd like an opportunity to, to respond. This is Jennifer Gray uh, from Keen and Bean. Um, I'm representing the owners at, um, at 6 College Street, uh, Kelsey Lemp and Max Kimlin. Um, we have submitted two letters to the zoning board um, in opposition to the appeal that is before your board tonight. I'm not gonna go into great detail. You have those submissions, um, you, you can certainly review them, but I would like to highlight a couple of the components um, in our submissions. And basically there are three components to our position with respect to this appeal. Number one is that we, we feel that the appeal should be denied um, based on procedural reasons um, outright. Uh, your code, the zoning code section 140-55 says that an appeal has to be filed with the building inspector um, within 30 days after the building inspector's determination is made. That determination was originally made in the order to remedy dated May 3rd um, of this year. Um, the appeal was filed on June 30th, so obviously more than 30 days had passed. Um, there was an intervening revised order to remedy dated, um, uh, there was a, uh, I believe it was June 9th. Um, however, it was substantially the same and contained the same determination as the May 3rd order to remedy. So um, under New York State case law, and there's a court of appeals um, opinion that I could provide a citation to if you like, um, it basically says that where a building inspector reissues the same determination, it doesn't restart the clock uh, for appeal purposes. Now, I know that um, the building inspector gave the courtesy to, to the property owner to stay enforcement of that original order to remedy while she researched um, the town records with respect to a 1999 CO that was produced um, by the property owner for an office. Um, now, the, the, a stay is authorized by both the town code and New York state law, but only after the appeal is filed. After the appeal is filed, um, there's a stay in place with respect to further enforcement. But prior to the appeal, there's no either town code provision or state law provision that would authorize that stay to be in place. So our first position is that the appeal should be denied for, for procedural reasons uh, because it's not timely. Um, in the event the zoning board um, considers the merits of the appeal, we do believe that the building inspector's determination should be upheld um, because it is correct. The order to remedy states that um, the property is being used in violation of section 140-8B of the zoning code. 140-8B um, basically says that um, no building or premises uh, can be used except for one or more of the uses um, designated for, for the particular district in which the building is in. This is in an R1 district and section 140-8B provides a list of permitted uses within the R1 district. Those uses do not include offices. They don't really include any, any business or commercial uses at all. Um, the appellants are obviously operating an office uh, from the premises. Um, so I think that it's it's pretty clear cut that um, building inspector Delaray's determination in that order to remedy is correct and should be upheld. Now, we're aware of the fact that the zoning code does permit a home occupation in any zoning district, including the R1 district. We are not saying that, um, that the appellants here cannot operate a home occupation from the premises. However, that home occupation has to be operated within the confines and the limitations set forth in the zoning code. And we believe that currently it is not being operated within those confines and those limitations. Um, for example, um, section 140-26 of the code regulates home occupation and it requires that there will be, there shall be no external evidence of the use. And as you can see from the photographs that we submitted to the board last month, um, and as I think you'll hear, well, you already heard from one resident, but I think you'll hear from other residents, there is external evidence of this use. Um, more, you know, that goes beyond signage. The external evidence um, is re with respect to cars coming and going, streets being clogged with, with cars parked um, at all hours of the day, 
I think you'll hear from from my clients that you know even sometimes when they pull you know drive down the road to pull in their driveway, um, cars are blocking their driveway. Um, so this is not this is not characteristic of a, of a residential district. Um, also, the definition of home occupation in 140-4 of the zoning code um, also states that the the home occupation can't change the residential character or appearance of the premises. And you know, for the same reasons I just said, we believe that it does change the residential character of the premises. The code also requires the home occupation to be, and I'll quote here, carried on by the permanent residents of the dwelling unit and no more than one other employee. So we heard tonight from the resident of of Five College, Ms. Spear. Um, it's my understanding that she is an employee of the appellant, um, but the, the language says that the business has to be carried on, carried on by the permanent resident and no more than one other employee. So we don't believe that the permanent resident can be both the person carrying on the business and the employee. Um, that language implies that the owner of the business um, has to be the permanent resident. Um, lastly, with respect to the definition of 140-4, um, the definition of home occupation, home occupations exclude uses such as medical or veterinary clinics, medical testing or other laboratories, barbershops, beauty parlors. There's a whole host of, of types of uses that home occupations are uh, that, are, that are not included in the definition of home occupation. And then there's a catch-all. It says, and other land, use um, other land use concerns that are not characteristic or typical of home occupation. We believe that the current use of the premises has these other land use concerns associated with it that are not characteristic of typical home occupation. The traffic um, issues such as is the, the, the septic system on the property sized appropriately for the occupancy of this building, the people that are, are using the, the facilities. Um, you heard from another resident concerned about well water. Is, is, you know, is the well sufficient for the type of demand that's being um, driven from this premises? Um, so related to our last um, argument, We've heard that the appellant has made the argument that they are grandfathered, um, that this is a, a pre-existing non-conforming use. In 2002, I believe, the zoning code was changed with respect to home occupations. There was an existing home occupation there at the time, um, as you saw from the, the 1999 certificate of occupancy for an office at the premises uh, from the, the predecessor and title to, to the appellants. In 2002, it's our understanding that uh, the appellants were not operating from the premises at that time. It was the, the, the resident um, homeowner that was operating the home occupation. We also have not heard any evidence that there's been, there was any external evidence of that home occupation in 2002 when the code was changed. So in 2002, when the code was changed, the, the, the home occupation use that was in, in play at that time was not rendered non-conforming to our knowledge. Therefore, there was no non-conforming use to continue. Rather, the non-conforming use was, was um, was started at the property years later when, when the appellants started renting from the, the, um, from the, the, the then owners. Um, so we don't believe that the grandfathering argument has any merit. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Um, and with that, I will, uh, I'll let the next person speak. Thank you very much. I'd like Please to speak. Away. Um, I'd like to speak. This is Jim Tinger. May I speak? You may. Thank you. Uh, am I able to video? I see only your name. Gotcha. Here I am. Hello. Uh, my name is Jim Tinger. I'm the youth director for the town of New Paltz. I've been running the New Paltz Youth Program for the past 28 years uh, at 220 Main Street. Um, uh, you know, I'm just finding it unfortunate that 
those who oppose this program have not spoke at all, have given any respect to what Amy and her crew has done for this town and for mental health services. Um, you know, and what the, what the program has done for the New Paltz School District, what it has done for my program. I mean, in 28 years, we have sent tons of people to this program who have, who I'm sure Amy could line up a thousand girls who can come and talk throughout the years, what this program meant to them, how it changed their lives, how important this was. Uh, I mean, I'm choking up here a little bit because uh, I don't know, I'm just, this is a little shocking to me, especially in this day and age where we talk about mental health services and how important it is in these communities and how honored, <laughs> honored we should be to have a program like this in New Paltz, in this community. Now I understand there's zoning things here, but I can't believe that this isn't something that can be discussed and worked out. I mean, we're talking about cars blocking driveways and a little bit more traffic in a residential neighborhood. Honored to have that as a problem, considering what this program does and how it has changed people's lives. Changed people's lives. And we're talking about what? Come on, you've got to be kidding me. I've been doing this for a long time. And all of you have seen what's going on in the world. And this is a program that changes things for people. This is a game changer. You don't agree with me? Talk to the school district. Talk to the school psychologist. Talk to every counselor that works in this town. Towns don't have this. There isn't a program like this anywhere. The program just won, Chronogram Magazine just named it the best counseling program in Hudson Valley, the whole valley. It was voted on for that and it won by a lot. It won best counselor and best program. And we're talking about zoning stuff here. Now, I understand there's legality involved, I get it, sure. I've been here for a while. I also understand about neighbors not being so happy of having a youth program or a youth serving program nearby, right? I live that. But there's conversations that can be had and there's things that can be talked about that will you know, lead to an end here. But the program deserves respect. And I, I would appreciate if those who oppose the program would say that when they speak, that I think it's a great program, but I do have some issues. And maybe we could talk about those things. You know? And I don't live next door. And I don't say, I've dropped many kids off there. And I understand a little extra traffic going by. I haven't heard anybody say that anybody's been hit by a car or that there's been drug use, I don't know, whatever the complaints might be. And I understand there's concerns, but those are concerns that can be talked about and discussed. I don't think this needs to be thrown under the bus. And I, it's hard to sit here and hear people talk about this program in a way that it deserves a lot more respect than that. Um, I got about a hundred examples that I can give about people's lives that have been changed, but I won't get into that. But simply nothing like this in the Hudson Valley, an excellent mental health service. And that's something we should be talking more about and having more of this. Honored to have this in New Paltz, honored. And it should be in every community. And the fact that you're lucky enough to have it here should be discussed more. I'll step out. I'm sorry, that was my dog jumping up on the counter to grab some food. I didn't mean your, to your dog agrees with me, I think. That's probably <laughs> why. Thank you. Hi, my Thank name is Amy Heminger. I'd like to speak if I can. Please go ahead. Thank you. I'm not going to turn my camera on. I'm home sick with COVID, so I'll spare everybody. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of the practice at Five College Ave and Amy Frisch. Um, and I will just jump and piggyback off of what Jim Tinger was saying. So I'm a lifelong resident of New Paltz. I'm raising my family here. I have a 20 year old, 17 year old and a 15 year old child. Um, <clears throat> I have personal experience with Amy as well as a past uh, board of education member. I understand policy, I understand dashes and I understand applying the law. But I would like to also share what that's like when you're writing a policy to address the suicide of a student and not one suicide in this town. So I think it is really important that everybody just take a minute 
and think about every movie you've watched, every book you've read, and think about who you want to be in that book and how you want to use your experience and your power and your policies and how you want to apply them that benefit everybody. I understand people are being impacted by this and that is unfortunate and should be addressed. And I have every confidence that every person watching this video right now has the capacity and the creativity and the willingness to come together and figure out a solution that doesn't remove a vital source, resource, a lifeline, literally. That is not poetry. It is a literal lifeline. And so as you're making your cases and airing your grievances, which are valid and legitimate and have are should be addressed, just keep that in mind. Who who do you want to be in this story? Because there will be an ending and we'll all have played a part in it. And you should be very clear about what part you want to play in it. Like okay, Jim thank said, you for your commentary. honored to have this program in this town and lucky. Hi, can I speak, please? Yes. Who, who am I talking to? This is um, Josh Robbins. I'm trying to start my video. It seems like there's, oh, here we go. Um, so I, um, my wife spoke uh, earlier. Um, we live at Two College Avenue. Um, so we are really directly across from this uh, property in question. Um, and just to emphasize, I, I, I don't know that there's a property that would be more impacted from the kinds of complaints that people are making about parking and about traffic. Um, <clears throat> we see a lot of neighbors here and we're, we're very fond of all our neighbors. Um, but I just wanted to speak on behalf of um, of uh, Amy and um, uh, the, you know, the vital uh, work that she's doing. And also just to say that uh, I, I, I think my wife and I consider it a nice feature of the neighborhood that this kind of thing is happening here. We don't have a problem, although if people do have a problem, we, we certainly, you know, uh, appreciate solutions uh, to it, but we have not had a problem with traffic. We have not had a problem with driveways. We have not had a problem with people dropping off their uh, kids. And um, like I said, we're if it, I think we're directly across. And um, if there were cars, you know, and we do see that people drop off um, their kids and sometimes wait and sometimes come back. It, it does not seem like an impact that is out of character uh, for the neighborhood, and it does not uh, to us feel like a problem in the neighborhood. So I just wanted to uh, uh, say that. Okay, thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak? Yeah, I would. Oh, hi, uh, my name is Jody Friedman. For some reason, my video it says that it that the host disabled my video. Let's see if it'll come on. Oh, there it goes, okay. Hi, um, I'm just gonna quickly say that, um, you know, in terms of the vital services that Amy Frisch and her uh, colleagues provide in the New Paltz area, um, my daughter had a severe issue last year. I'm not gonna go into the details, uh, but we had, a, we had to have a team of providers. Amy was among them but was the only person that you could see in person. All of her other providers had to be virtual and they were fine, but there was something grounding and different about being able to see somebody in person. And just to reiterate that, you know, if, if, we, if you wanna do anything for the mental health crisis that's happening for our adolescents right now, um, you know, allowing this practice to continue because I, I know that last year, a year ago, if I would have had, if her services were canceled or interrupted when we were at a very tender time, I, I don't know what would have happened, um, you know, with the care of my daughter. She likely would have needed to go medical or psychiatric patient. And that is the God honest truth. Um, so, you know, in terms of, interrupting services that are 
very needed in this area. Um, it's, um, and, and Amy's just been a godsend to my family regarding that. So I don't know anything about zoning laws, but I know that um, when it comes to psyche, psychological care, um, you know, have, being able to have some, an in-person um, space for our adolescents in New Paltz is extremely important. And that's all, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I may speak, please. You may. This is Phoenix. Thank you. This is Phoenix Kawamoto. Um, I'm trying to turn on my video, but it says that I can't. I, I um, had difficulty getting into the meeting, so my apologies for my late arrival, but I uh, don't normally attend these types of things. And um, I work in service of the community in regards to helping people connect and help parents find resources for their young people, uh, particularly in issues pertaining to mental health and wellness, suicide prevention, and substance use disorder. Um, I've been part of the town uh, as far as this work for over 10 years now, and I consider it a privilege to serve. And from the moment I met um, Amy Frisch and learned of her work, she became one of the top people that I recommended and referred families to for services. I've had the privilege of working with her and I'm aware of her work uh, through the different types of initiatives and projects that I've done within the community. And uh, I can only echo what Jim Tinger has said and several other people at a time right now, and, and I get emotional as well, <laughs> um, and, and young people in particular are in such a vulnerable place at this time in our world. Um, and, and I am someone who is all about following the rules and all of that, but I'm also someone who's like, okay, but we have to find a way to help make things happen because lives are on the line. It's not hyperbole, lives are on the line. And uh, um, when it comes to adolescents and mental health treatment, we are at a severe, severe deficit. We have desperate parents in this county, not even just New Paltz, but in this county, it is extremely hard to find someone qualified who youth can relate to and he'll feel safe with. Um, and so to have someone like Amy is beyond a blessing, is beyond a blessing. Um, and I support that neighbors are reaching out, that they're frustrated with whatever might be happening. I don't live there. But I can tell you that it does take a village. It takes the, the, the ability to come together to find solutions. And New Paltz, I'm, a, I'm proud to work for this community because people do come together and find the way through to a solution. So I am imploring upon you as a planning board to please work with Ms. Frisch and the neighbors, find a solution because we can't afford another lost person in this community. We cannot afford it. And I just want that message heard tonight and I thank you for the opportunity to speak it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? At the My moment? name is Kai Radigan. I'd I like apologize. to speak, please. I would like to speak. Go ahead, Kai. Thank you. Um, so I hear a lot about myself in this. I, I was that teenager. The experiences I had going to group therapy at Five College Avenue from age 14 to 24 was life-changing um, and it was life-saving. It was healing, supportive, it was connection. It was meeting other teens after school in a comfortable residential setting where it felt safe to, at a time where I wouldn't otherwise have put myself out there to bond with my peers. Learning how to connect and be present with my peers in a healing environment to learn healthy give and take in a therapeutic space. These weren't necessarily just school friends or neighbors, they were teens and young adults that I was actively working on my stuff with. So committing to a time once a week to hold space for one another, we weren't and we're still not taught that in schools. Sometimes teens aren't taught that anywhere else. It shouldn't take the work of social workers doing what they can and have always done to ensure the mental health and safety of our teens, but that is the reality far too often. 
it does take a village. Every community member must tune into the preservation and delicate nature of teenage mental health because New Paul's does need this. I've lived here since 2010. It has always needed this. Quite frankly, we as a community need to do more to ensure that kids are getting what they need. I need you to know that therapy saves lives and this practice saved my life. If you shut this down instead of coming up with a solution, a compromise that serves everyone in the community, it would be detrimental to so many of our kids' futures and their families. And isn't that all of us? I say all of this to say, I urge you to allow groups at this location to continue. I urge you to truly consider what matters here. And I don't know anything about zoning either, but I think everyone's already said this, just sit down and talk to each other because that's what New Paul's is and that's what New Paul's has been for me. So please just reconsider. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Okay, thank you for your commentary. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this public hearing? I would like to speak. Hi, my name is Casey uh, Dieterich. I'm from Middletown. Um, oh, I start video. Okay. Um, oops. I am from Middletown, but I'm actually moving to New Paltz next week. Um, and I understand that the issue regarding Five College Avenue is a zoning issue. But as the recent social work graduate, we learned that sometimes policies and rules need to be changed to meet growing needs. The thing that sets IGT, which is it's a girl thing, um, Amy's practice, apart from any practice I've come across in my experience is that IGT is not just a therapy office, it's a community, a community where every individual feels valued and has a safe place to call home. I have been a part of this community since December of 2005, when at 15 years old, I was referred to IGT from an inpatient psychiatric hospital. Despite the hospital being a typical seven to 10 day stay, I was hospitalized for three months due to my high risk status and no outpatient therapist, including my old therapist or any other therapist at Ulster County's mental health clinic, being willing to take on the case. Until Amy agreed to take me on as a patient, which ended up changing my life for the better. It was a time of deep struggle and never feeling like I was good enough or I couldn't amount to anything. I started group and individual therapy at IGT's old office on Route, 3, 30, uh, Route 32, uh, where a teen girls crammed into a space that was great, but not quite home. Then in March of 2006, IGT moved to Five College Ave, where we had a waiting room and a large office to hold groups in. And we made the most amazing artwork. And I finally found a place that I felt accepted, supported, and most importantly, it made me believe I, I could achieve my dreams. Um, she, Amy even created a life after high school group because a bunch of us girls aged out and we didn't want to leave that sense of community. But so flash forward to 2021, I was entering a master's of social work program and I'd always dreamed for working for IGT. And so I reached out to Amy and because of her amazing relationship with Adelphi University's School of Social Work program, um, I was easily able to set up the internship and I, did, I interned at the Montgomery office where Amy created an LGBTQ youth expressive arts group, which to my knowledge is the only one in the surrounding area. And at this current time, we have seen you know, a growing trend of more LGBTQ individuals. And with that also comes uh, higher rates of mental illness and risk of suicide. And research shows that having at least one accepting and affirming adult in an LGBTQ youth's life can reduce the risk of suicide by nearly 40%. At IGT, every person who walks through that door is met with acceptance and affirmation, regardless of being LGBTQ or not. But for those LGBTQ youth who get to experience group therapy with their queer peers, their experience is indescribable. Um, but one thing that is clear from my experience with Amy, um, and it's a girl thing, as both a patient and a professional, is that her reputation for the services she provides remains strong. Many of my professors spoke highly and said that they refer patients to her all the time. I had a woman stop me at a doctor's office seeing the magnet, and she told me about how Amy saved her daughter's life. And so I, I would ask you to I please summarize experience. this up quickly. Yes, I'm almost done. I'm in the last part. So uh, with that, you know, with the COVID-19 uh, COVID public health emergency coming to an end, the last few years have disrupted the lives of all of us. But in many ways, our youths were impacted in ways we are just beginning to understand. All mental illnesses are on the rise. And services just like the ones that IGT provides are needed to support our local youth and protect their future mental well-being. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak at this point with regard to the public hearing at Five College Avenue? 
Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I would like Go to ahead. speak. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, speak. State, state your name, please. Uh, I'm having trouble with my video, but my name is Paul Wally. I'm a minister as part of Redeemer Lutheran Church and the neighbor of Amy Fresh. I'm right next door on the same side of the street. Um, I don't know, am I coming through? You're fine, I can hear you. Okay, I'm not worried about the video. All I would like to say is this. She has never been obtrusive in any way. The cars that I see coming together at the end of the street are not overwhelming. <laughs> they don't, there's not, we're not talking about, you know, people's driveways being blocked and so forth. They're just congregating, letting their kids off, picking their kids up and going home. And I don't have any problem with that. There's no, uh, there's no trouble. There's no hassle. There's no congestion and nobody beeping or honking or anything. I mean, <laughs> there couldn't be a more quiet and easygoing person than Amy. And the, the girls that she teaches are a wonder, are a benefit to our community. And to just take that away on a, on a legally, okay. legalese Thank point you. seems Thank unfair. You. Thank you. I really Please. support her work very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak at the public hearing of Five College Avenue? Yeah. I would like to speak, Russell, Russell Schindler, attorney for Amy Frisch. First of all, I'd like to go through a little bit of the history of this property. Um, the previous owners were Sarah Vetter and Diane Justison, who in 1999 applied for a building permit and was granted a certificate of occupancy for an office. And it was used as a home office until they left in around December of 2005. Then less than six months after that, in March of 2006, and, and to be, you know, about four months after, plaintiff, meaning Ms. Frisch, had uh, occupied the office for her use as a professional office for her psychotherapy practice. Uh, she was renting that space from the previous owner at that time. She is now the owner of the property. The property has been used as a home office continuously with, with the exception of that four month break since 1999. As a result, that use is still grandfathered in under the 1999 definition of home occupation. Under the 1999 home occupation definition, the person whose occupation it was did not have to reside in the house. It just had to be their property. And as noted previously by Ms. Gray, the law changed in 2002 to require that the person who's run, who is engaged in the home occupation live in the house. Right now we have that situation with Rachel Spear. Rachel lives in the house with her family and is a psychotherapist in the home occupation along with Amy Frisch. Um, so it's our contention that the appeal should be granted, our appeal should be granted on the grounds that this is not a non-conforming use, but rather it is a, a perfectly legal home occupation under the terms of the town zoning law. So we have, you know, the one argument is that it's perfectly legal under the old definition for which Amy is grandfathered in. And the other argument is even if that's not the case, 
it's still perfectly legal as a home occupation because the person who is the permanent resident of the home, who is Rachel Spear at this moment, is, is participating as a psychotherapist in the home occupation. I'd also note that um, there was an initial determination that was made by Ms. Delery in May. And then that initial determination was placed on hold so that Ms. Delery could reevaluate some of the information she was given. She then reissued a new determination on uh, June 6th. I believe June 6th, and we filed the appeal by the end of June, within the 30 days. This appeal is timely because it was on hold, and a hold can be placed by the person who issues the order to remedy. Why would anyone take an appeal from an order that's on hold? So when, when the new order to remedy was issued on June 9th, excuse me, June 9th, we promptly took our appeal. It's timely and it should be granted for the reasons, not only for the legal reasons I've said, but because of the, the moral and important reasons that the people who've spoken up about the mental health issues that are being addressed by Ms. Frisch in this business and how urgently needed those services are not just for New Falls, but the entire surrounding area. So again, I ask that the uh, appeal be granted and that Ms. Uh, Frisch's use be deemed either legal as grandfathered in under the 1999 definition or as legal because Rachel Spear lives there and she's the one engaged in the home occupation along with Ms. Frisch. Thank you. Okay, any more commentary from the public? I'd like to speak, please. My name is Delta Lamp. Um, I'm trying to turn my video on, it was disabled. Hi. Um, my name is Kelsey Lemp. I live at Six College Avenue. Um, I'm actually the house adjacent to Five College Avenue where this business resides. And my house is very deeply affected by this business, unfortunately. Um, we're, I'm not here to you know, have any problems with the business itself. I think it really shows just how many people showed up here to defend Ms. Fritch and you know, come to bat for her, how successful her business is on a commercial level. There are so many people here in support and I fully support it as well. You know, I am a teacher in the Hudson Valley for inner city students who benefit from services like this and they're very important to our community. However, they are important to our community in a building that is zoned for it. This is my private home that we just purchased in a very quiet neighborhood at the end of a T intersection, a dead end street. And the driveway in question that is being blocked constantly is mine, unfortunately. And I know my neighbors sometimes don't get the overflow traffic from this business. I unfortunately do because the business is not blocking its own driveway. It's parked on my driveway. And I unfortunately, I don't feel safe speaking to any of the members and the clientele that park their cars on my private property anymore because of the feedback I've gotten from it and from the very aggressive response from these clientele when I've asked them to move their cars. Um, I've tried to bring my garbage pails up, a very typical residential activity. And I've had people scream at me that they will not move their cars because they don't have a, they don't need to listen to me, which I agree. But unfortunately, I need to be able to access my home in a safe manner. And I've spoken to Ms. Fritch about this multiple times. And this has been ongoing. This is not something that has just happened recently. This has been going on for years. And I think the last time I was able to speak to Ms. Fritch, I actually witnessed some of the group therapy sessions. And I was inside the building, witnessed how big of an office space it is. And there were at least 15 girls in that group therapy session at that time with multiple cars down in the driveway in the middle of the winter when it was very icy out, refusing to move themselves. Amy did make a good effort to try to work with us a little bit and put up a commercial zone sign which is also something we didn't want on our property. But 
it was very cyclical and always come back to being heavily blocked again. So unfortunately, I cannot say in good faith that I think if this business continued, it would maintain itself in the way it is right now with very minimal clientele coming because it has not in the past and it has been repeating itself. It runs very late at night sometimes. We do have the lights constantly shining up our driveway. And I honestly, I do go down and pick up the garbage about once a week from our T intersection to keep away the deer that come down and will eat it and all the mass that are there, especially after the larger group sessions. I could name more than, more than enough times that I have been faced with the aggression from some clientele when asking them to move, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So I just really wanna reiterate again that I think this is a very successful business and I think it's a great thing for the community. I do not think it belongs in this type of neighborhood based on the traffic and the effect it has on the houses in the neighborhood. But thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, Kelsey, you said something about um, a commercial, but the sound was breaking up a bit and I couldn't hear it. Could you repeat what you said about commercial? Um, I think what I was referencing was that the amount of traffic and clientele seems to be on more of a commercial level and not for a single office space based on how many people are there at that time during her sessions. Thank you. Hello, I'd just like to clarify one thing. Um, this is Rachel Spear, tenant and employee at Five College Avenue. Our groups don't get larger than six participants. You're saying you have a maximum of six there each time? Yes, only when groups are in session. Okay. I would like to speak. Your name, please. My name is Paula Lakshan. Um, <clears throat> I'm a licensed psychotherapist and I um, have been doing this work for about 30 years and have known Amy Frisch and the work that she's done. So um, at this point, I am seeing individual clients at Five College Ave. I'm there at least one day a week. And my experience is that it's very quiet. Clients are completely respectful. There's room enough in the driveway there for the clients that are being seen. Um, so, you know, I know that you're wanting to wrap up, but it just seems clear to me. The mental health services, as you know, has been said tonight, are crucial, especially at this moment in time. And this is a stellar program that actually Jim talked about having just gotten the Chronogrammys Award of the Hudson Valley. And it seems that two neighbors have spoken about their desire to see this program continue. So there is one neighbor, maybe another neighbor, who has some issues. And, you know, we're social workers, we work out issues. There's mediation, there's ways to make this work. So whatever the zoning uh, grandfathered in needs to be investigated. And you can see from the numbers of people who are here tonight in support of this program, this is crucial that we work this out. And so that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you for your commentary. Joe? Yeah, um. There was a letter, several page letter that came uh, on, on April 15th, which is today. And I myself have not had a chance to read it other than skim it quickly. Um, I, I, it, would, it would seem to me, if I'm correct, to extend the public hearing. We're also waiting for a further determination um, from Stacy. I saw that letter also. Are you in receipt of that letter? I am. Um, I mean, certainly at this point, the, it's up to the board. The board can extend the public hearing till its next meeting. Well, if we don't extend the public hearing, we have 30 days with which to make a decision. Is that correct? 
Well, that's the problem would be if you close if you close it, you're going to be forced to make a decision. And it sounds as though there may be more in information coming from the code enforce enforcement officer. Maybe, maybe not. In response to some of the things that were said here tonight, the board members may have additional questions based on what was said here. And if there's any effort that could be devoted to I don't know, I counted probably about six uh, people who suggested some way to try and find a solution or work it out. That might also happen, but for the board, you're certainly entitled to um, adjourn the public hearing to a new date in September for the receipt of additional information. Ben? Any, com any commentary from, oh, Stacy? There is still a hand up on the board. Max, I, you have your hand up. I don't know if you still wanted to speak under the public. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to point that out. And, and Amy Frisch has been waiting to speak also. Oh, yeah. So that kind of blends in with your wallpaper, though. I couldn't see that one. Thank you. Go ahead, Max. Okay. <clears throat> I guess, Amy, I've got your, 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 there's Max's name. So I don't know who's going to speak. Um, okay, Amy, you're up. Go. Thanks, Len. I'll let you bring it home, Max. <clears throat> I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Amy Frisch, and um, I have developed a program called It's a Girl Thing in 1997. I want to tell you, first of all, I'm so appreciative um, for those of you who are here and have found your voice and have been able to share um, some of your thoughts and concerns. Um, that's really what my program is all about. It's about helping people find their voice and speak out and take care of themselves and take care of each other. That's really what we do. That's the premise of my, my program. In 1997, as a new therapist in this community in New Pulse, uh, there were no holistic treatment for teenagers. And uh, it worked in a medical model, which was good for many people, but it was not good for most people, um, particularly young children and teenagers. And so I developed a program that is holistic based. It's based on in nature, it's based on doing expressive arts, it's based on mindfulness, it's based on nutrition, it's based on exercise, it's based on relationships with each other. It's based on assertiveness training. Um, and so obviously when working with teenagers, working with each other, their value with, with each other is paramount. And so I pulled a few really brave young women together and um, created a program called It's a Girl Thing Expressive Arts Support Group. Um, and that program has grown. There's not a program like that in this area, that's true. Um, and I um, was really happy to um, be able to find this space at Five College Avenue that I've leased with a certificate of occupancy and permitted use um, since 2006. And uh, the, the office was um, built in 1999. Uh, the own, prior owner of the building may or may not be on site in this moment. And, um, and so it felt like a perfect fit, right? It, it felt a little homey. Um, it was, it, I, I, you know, I'd love to share some images with you, perhaps if we meet again or today, that it's really surrounded by woods. Most of the property around us is owned by Sunni Nupals and is wooded. Um, the neighbor behind me, Mariella's property is all woods except for her house, which is not even visible. Um, and actually Mr. Kimlin's property is wooded his, his house is at the end of his property. So I can't even see his house from where I am. So it does allow a lot of privacy and opportunity for middle schoolers to walk safely directly from school. Uh, and it allows accessibility for kids to come independently. So, um, you know, during the pandemic, right? I, um, we closed our doors to the virtual sessions for only three months. And from that point on, I knew emphatically the teenagers needed to be together. And so we did fire pits and we sat outside and it was chilly, but we did what we needed to do. And I apologize because I didn't realize that was a violation. My effort has been, you know, undoubtedly to keep kids alive and to keep kids together and to keep us navigating forward. That has always been my intention. I appreciate those of you who are here, even um, Mrs. Gray and, and Max Kimlin and, and Kelsey, and those of you who are 
not particularly fond of the services or, or the conditions that are happening here. I totally get that. I've always been able to come to the table. Um, I've never met with Mr. Feldman or Max Kimlin. I've offered, that hasn't really been extended, but I do think we can do better in this community, right? When I think about the May um, awareness statement that Neil Bebbitt's put out, what he asked us to do, if you haven't seen it, it really was beautifully written. But his, his message was to lean in. We are in a crisis. And I think we can do better than we've done in, in ourselves as neighbors and in connecting and, and healing. I don't want anybody to feel unsafe in their home. Clearly, that is not my intention. Um, I'm happy to make some adjustments and I'm happy to look this out. It is imperative that the teenagers who are in my practice continue to come and be seen. They are high risk clients. Um, Casey was, was right. I, you know, I think one of the components is that we're able to see kids in my practice that are, that are at risk more so than others. And um, our goal is to keep them out of the hospital and in the community. That's, that's my intention. But clearly I don't want anybody else in the community not feeling safe as well. Um, we have made some allocations to try to really work with the feedback that I've gotten um, we have a mobile sign that says, please don't block the driveway that we, that I've moved back and forth during our group sessions that happened in the fall. And Kelsey, you're right. It has been quieter because we don't do groups in the summer. We take the summer off. We do weekend retreats. We did three of them this year um, with a lot of success. And it um, gives kids a whole different opportunity to, to do a deep dive into healing. But we have a movable sign right, to try to work with our neighbors and to try to be respectful of their space. And uh, the other thing I did was open a second office so that we could divert uh, some of the referrals. Referrals are coming in all over the place for all clinicians. There's not enough resources to meet the need. So I opened a second location in Orange County to, di to divert some of that, um, that business to a different location. And um, it was actually it was actually Officer Tiffany Claude who was at my office, who suggested putting a sign up, not uh, which was on my property, uh, and she placed it there herself. Actually, thought it was a good idea to start to really mitigate and to sort of compromise with our neighbors. So you know, I've really worked with the community too to get feedback and to get suggestions, and um, I'd love to have more conversation about that. Um, it is imperative that my work continues with our teens. We have programs in the fall that kids count on. And they, they, and I don't know what I would do with these clients. I don't, there are no other resources for them right now. So it would be traumatic for them to not have continuity of care. So, you know, that being said, um, I'm happy um, to come to the table, of course. I don't want to take up everyone's time. Um, I, think, I think we can do better. I think neighbors, if we can talk to each other in person, I'd love that. You know, that's um, always my first my first intention, of course. Um, okay. And I really thank, finally, I really want to thank those of you who've shown up in support of IGT. It's really good for your ego. I really appreciate that. I appreciate the board um, and your volunteer time. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to do your job. And I appreciate Max and Kelsey and Mrs. Gray. We all need to have a voice, and this is a place where we can be heard. And I respect that too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Next person to speak, Max. Yeah, Max. Hello, everyone. Uh, I can't turn my video on, so yeah, let's do that. Hey, so I'm Max Kimlin. Um, I live at Six College Avenue with my fiance Kelsey. Our house is the, at the end of the dead end road, so the road is actually a T intersection, and one side of that T intersection is my driveway. Um, that's where my driveway connects. The other side of this T intersection isn't really a driveway. It's part of the road, um, and I think that needs to be made clear that this is not a driveway that they're using. It's all the way up at the end of the road directly with our house. And it's 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 an absolutely uh, just part of the road. They're allowed to park on it, obviously, that's fine, but it's not a parking lot. Um, we, um, since Amy bought that house, uh, she started making lots of changes to it. It was, it's just a regular house or was just a regular house. She started, you know, modifying it. She turned it into an office. She knocked down, I'm, I'm assuming she knocked down some walls, added some walls. Um, the front door to the structure now is part of the office. It never was. That was part of the home at, at the time. There was a side entrance to the to the office. Um, that's not there anymore. So there's been modifications made to that house. I know that there's been no no talking to building inspectors, anything about that. The tenants actually now 
enter from the back of the building. So it's completely not a house anymore. So just having this idea that it's a house, it's not, it's a large, large office. Um, so ever since she made those changes, we've started to see many more people. My parents owned this house before me. And when we were kids growing up, uh, I actually, I remember my mom would always be pissed off because there were cars in the road. And she actually, she actually wrote a letter, which I'm sure we're going to, you guys are going to see, but she always talked about it where she would say something to Amy and Amy would go, oh, yeah, okay. Conflict resolution, whatever it is. And then she would just kind of ignore the problem and it would come back. But my, my parents are not the kind of people that would, that, that, that start trouble and stuff like that. I guess I'm that kid. So um, either way, as this started to happen more and more we started to have problems with their people as we, when we bought the house, it started to become my problem, you know, it really did become my problem. So, you know, we, we went down and we talked to Amy. Kelsey has gone there um, a few times when cars have blocked the driveway, talked to Amy. Oh, I'll fix it. Okay. Well, it doesn't get fixed. So next time we'll go down there. And I kind of just was like, well, I'm not talking to her anymore. I'm just going to start, you know, going and just saying, Hey guys, you've got to get out of our driveway and move, which multiple times I actually had one guy who just said, I'm not moving. And I said, well, why? You're blocking the road and my driveway. I need to get out. And he would not move for 20 minutes. They sat in that drop in that car with the windows up. So, and this is, this is just what happened all the time. Another situation, I came down to get my mail and there was a, a one of the fathers, somebody had, was out of the car standing next to my mailbox, pissing on it. So it, it's, it's an interesting theory that this is like, like they've been doing something to help this, but this is lots of people parked directly in front of my house almost every single night until late nine ten o'clock and i don't want to hear from any of these people that they haven't heard it because i am very 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 vocal i go and talk to people i don't like bringing things to towns i don't like this like big oh i'm going to call the cops all this other stuff i want to talk to my neighbors i want if, if a neighbor has a problem you come to me and you talk to me or i'll go to you and talk to you but there has been no answer from her there's been no answer from any of them whoever her tenants are there that are working there that's pretending like like she cares about this whole situation that hasn't happened since we made these complaints nobody's come and talked to us there hasn't been any communication between them so there's there's no point where they're saying where they're coming across and saying oh i'd like to work with you i'd like to do something it's not happening so either way, um, you know, the, the other thing I want to talk about is that, you know, she's talking about how she wants to work with us. Um, this business is not a small business anymore. It's not the same business that it was when, when she started operating. Businesses this size move, they move to commercial properties. This is not something that she has to stop doing. She just should stop doing it here in our neighborhood. That is a business that could move to any commercial property. We had somebody from the youth facility um, down next to the middle school talking about it. There is a there is directly next door to that a, a, a whole commercial building that's been for sale for months. You could move there. Please move there. It's a better facility with a parking lot. So there's no there's going to be no effect to this program. It's just that it needs to be in a spot that it's good for this. Either way, that's all I want to say. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Max. Good night. Is there anyone else that would like to speak with regard to Five College Avenue? Yes, this is Rachel Spear, tenant and employee of Five College Avenue. And I just uh, you've um, already spoken, I believe. Am I correct? Yes. Am I not allowed to speak again? No. Once is enough. Thank you. Okay. Well. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that has not spoken before that would like to speak? Okay, at this point in time, are there any board members that would like to add any commentary or would you like to save your commentary until the next public hearing at our September meeting? <clears throat> Len? Yes, Sean. Is, is there a decision that the, the public hearing is gonna be kept open? Um, that is my intention, yes, to keep the public hearing open. We need to put that in a form of a motion but prior to that, I was wondering if anyone at the of the board had any particular comments or questions. That yeah, they'd like I, to I've got two things. One is uh, this board received information pertaining to this, like I saw this email late today. That simply is not enough time for us to to examine this and consider it carefully. So speaking for myself, I'm not prepared to to uh, 
to go further into the discussion towards a decision uh, until we've we've had the chance to do that. Uh, my other comment is I just like to say thank you to all the public who's who's come and expressed themselves. It's certainly given us uh, a lot of food for thought, but uh, but I think uh, there's still things to be considered here that that uh, that don't leave us in a position to to decide anything right now. I will agree with you, John, that getting something dated August 15th and even August 10th, it should have been to us in our, our uh, emails sooner than that. So do any other members of the board yeah, have any? I'd like any? to I'd like to just uh, make a quick comment to uh, the, the many members of the public who spoke so movingly about the importance of mental health care. Uh, um, I don't think anybody disagrees with that. I've had personal experience of the vital importance for uh, um, social work, mental health care, different things like that in my own family. Uh, um, but you're not here to convince us that uh, this, that mental health care is a good thing. Of course, it's a good thing. What we have to discuss by law, we are constrained as a zoning board to discuss the correct use of the land in accordance with uh, our zoning, our zoning laws. So um, if a wonderful thing were to happen uh, um, that is not compatible with the zoning law, we don't have a basis to say, gee, that's really wonderful. We have to follow the law. So uh, your, your very kind words toward this business are somewhat irrelevant, I'm sorry to say. But thank you for expressing yourselves. Okay, Catherine or Stephen, do you have, thank you, Amy. Uh, do Catherine or Stephen, Joe, you have your hand up? Oh, you're I'm sorry. Your, you're I on can't mute. hear you. I can't hear you, Joe. I can see your mouth moving, but uh, now, you, now you can. Sorry. Now we can. Thank you. Just um, to clarify the point, I, I know this session of the hearing has gone for quite a while. There was a request on behalf of Rachel Spear to speak again. She is somewhat related to the appellant's side of this issue. Um, without prolonging it tonight, I just wanted to see if we can get a consensus. If, if this is continued to another meeting, it doesn't mean that anyone who spoke tonight cannot speak again at a continued public hearing, correct? I would agree with that, that anyone that spoke tonight can speak at the next public hearing. I would only ask that they don't repeat what they said. If they have new or additional information, we would gladly hear it, but I will not deny anyone the opportunity to speak. Russell? Un yes. Understood? Yes. Okay. And Rachel, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, uh, Catherine, did you have your, I'm sorry, did Catherine have something she wanted to say? Yes, thank you, Lynn. Um, as a nurse and a parent of teens, I am intimately aware of the mental health challenges that are faced by our youth today. And I understand um, the work that Amy Frisch is doing is literally life-saving. Um, so thank you for that. You truly are having an impact on the community. Um, I will reiterate what Amy said. Um, the scope of our decision is limited to the zoning law. And so that is where we need to review all of that information. And as John said, we got some of that today. So I need to review what we received today and any additional information that comes forward um, to help us make this decision. So thank you. Again, for the public, the next zoning board of, thank you. Uh, um, the next zoning board meeting will be September 19th, if you would like to notch that into your calendars. So at this point in time, I'd entertain a motion to extend the public hearing for Five College Avenue. Do I have a second, please? I second. 
Thank you. Seconded by um, Amy. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 <clears throat> okay, so the public hearing will be extended to uh, next month. I've got to turn a light on. Excuse me. Um, I just asked that anybody who spoke to me that was reading from something, a letter, if you have a letter, could you just email it to me for the record? Thank you. Okay. I, I missed that. I had to go turn the light on. Did, is there something I needed to know, Joe? Uh, no, I think that uh, Brianna was asking people if they have a written letter maybe that they were reading from and they want to submit it yes to send it to you right brianna yes they can email me and my emails on the, the website for the zoning board <laughs> okay thank you okay so the next item on tonight's agenda is a area variance for 128 mountain rest road I entertain a motion to uh, open that public hearing. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 John. Aye. Aye from Catherine. Okay, so the public aye. hearing is open. Um, the property owner, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. My name is Megan Zuslin. Can you okay. hear me okay? We can hear you fine. Can I just ask you to hold for a moment? Is there anyone from the comp from the public that has a comment to make or a question to ask? I don't see anybody, Lynn. Okay, thank you, Brianna. Um, so at this point in time, the reason I did that was there was, normally we would ask you to explain why you're here and what you're going to be done. All of the members of the of the board are aware from your discussion at the last meeting. Is there anyone that needs the property owner to explain again why they're why they are here for this particular variance? I think we have all the information. We've we've okay. needed for that. Okay, so we've opened the public hearing. No one is here to speak about anything with regard to the public hearing. So I guess at this point in time, we would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I need a second, please. I second. Okay, seconded by Amy. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the property owner, there are five questions that need to be answered. Are you there? Yes. I'm okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to read the questions to you, if you would. Okay. And um, yes or no would be the appropriate answer, please. Okay. Whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by granting of the area variance. No. Okay. Uh oh, what did I do? Hello? You're okay. We're fine. We can hear you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I hit some kind of a button. <laughs> Must have been the eject button. Uh, back to the inbox. Oh boy. Okay. I guess you're going to have to do without my face. No, we can okay. yeah, Whether the benefits fine, sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area of variance. Sorry, could you repeat that? You cut out the first part. That's okay. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area of variance. Sorry, I'm not quite understanding that. Is there some other way you could have done this? Oh, 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 sorry, no. Okay. Whether the requested area variance is substantial. Yes. 
Sorry, could you repeat that? I can't. I... Sure. Whether the requested area variance is substantial. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Okay. That's all right. I'll change it. <laughs> Not a problem. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. No. I'm going to try something. Let's see what happens. Oh, you still there? Yes. Okay. Whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the area variance? No. Okay. Okay, so at this point in time, I'd ask if any members of the board have any questions with regard to discussion of the of this particular area variance unfortunately i don't dare touch his computer because i'll probably lose everything so you'll just have to deal with my voice i'm sorry does any actually excuse me we can see you you can see me but i can't see you <laughs> and i don't want to touch the wrong button and lose you totally so okay does any do any of the members of the board have any particular questions or problems that they would like to ask the applicant or involve in discussion with regard to this application? Uh, just one question for me quickly. Yes, did, did you have any conversations with any of your neighbors uh, expressing any opinions about this for or against? Um, we did actually. We are very close with our neighbors, Ralph and Maurice Maldari, as well as, which is to the left of our property, um, as well as the, the people in front of us, Jenny Redgate. Um, and we've all agreed basically that a six foot fence would be totally feasible and not at all obtrusive to, to anyone. Um, they would do the same if they had young kids um, like we did. And uh, I believe even my neighbor would, you know, hopefully in the future might want to do something similar. And um, because of the busy road that we have, a six foot fence makes a lot more sense than four. We're the type of people that, you know, we've discussed this with our neighbors. We, we go by the rules. We've gotten permits for every single work we've had in the house. And I'm sure, um, that's come across your desk, Stacey, uh, multiple times. So this, you know, particular rule of having the four foot fence, we totally agree. Um, and it obviously keeps everyone safe. But in this instance that, you know, we are on Mountain Rest Road, and it is busy and everybody speeds, as well as our children being so young, I have a three year old that I'm looking at right now that's climbing something. Um, Right. You know, and and with our dog um, that is able to actually jump four foot four feet high, it's just not enough to keep us safe. Um, so we would definitely be extremely grateful for this to be to be granted. Well, I I personally will agree with you that Mountain Rest Road is a treacherous road. So it really is. <laughs> yes, but it is a road. So yes. okay. Uh, any other comments from any of the board members? No, I, I think Stacy had something to add, though. Thank you, Catherine. I just want to make sure everybody has the new, the revised drawing. Um, last month, um, the drawing was somewhat incorrect, and the applicants did do the revised drawing. And I just want to make sure everyone has that and is aware that this new drawing is accurate. And this is the variance that they're seeking, this location. I have it. You got it. I got it. Thanks, Stacy. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this point in time, I uh, entertain a motion to grant the variance as per the request, the area variance for a six foot fence in front of the property located at, is it 128 or 38? I'm sorry, 128 Mountain Rest Road in New Paltz. I need a second, please. I'll second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. 
I will, Brianna, I will bring you the paperwork um, as soon as I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys okay. so much. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Good you evening. Bye-bye. Okay, at this point in time, I guess there's just only things left is discussion amongst the board members with anything in particular. I would ask Brianna if you could, um, if you send us in the future the link to the meeting, it's much easier to click on it. Valerie was able to figure out that we actually needed to go back to last month's meeting in order to get sign on, but I, I didn't see the agenda come across in, uh, in the mail. I, I put the agenda up, well, I hung the agenda last week, but I will, I'll send a separate link also. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else have any other questions, comments? Nope, okay, 8.35, I entertain a motion to close the meeting. I move. Seconded by John, all those in favor, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Good night to all. Thank you for much. Thank you so much for coming. Good night now. Bye, everybody. Good night.